What is going down, NVIDIA fam? Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the 497.09. Roughly about a week or so and a half ago, give or take, this came out and a lot of things were changing. As they get ready to release a brand new one, we will be sizing that one up a little bit more exponentially than the last portion of the holidays have been eaten up in my channel for the community members. Cheers. Hopefully all the holidays has been going well with you. For newer community members, my name is Matt here at the McGarver 7 channel. And by newer, it means you can hit that subscription button in company with the notification bell. Because so we're going to be scrolling into some benchmarks and some hash notes as we go into the game ready driver that nvidia has supplied with us for this platform as things change with inside of the dlss and the rtx global illumination what will we see so let's go ahead and scroll into it before we dive into the pixels of seeing what is changed for point for point to kind of get a better understanding of the graphics accelerator on and off as well as the newer drivers sized up with the older driver as we can see right over here as mentioned before dlss makes a nice situation for icarus on top of that for as far as the best day one game ready experience you also have the portion of the illumination for the rtx gis to the maximum performance and the image quality in addition to the offering portion of support and the latest titles for as far as where halo made the list yes and some people have still been having some issues and if you are there are some specific drivers that each individual site play does have up there but it seems like they've kind of hammered out most part within game drivers of the game as well leave a comment down below if you've been afflicted by any of this now rdr2 and doom gets grouped into one little situation of tdr where some of the systems will crash as they think it's getting a little too hot to handle yes who knew a game would be so epic doom 3 for the bfg edition and the games for the corruption on top of the portion of launch youtube inside of the random display for as far as the extreme and the contrast and the gamma and the idle during video gameplay back portions of that on top of the situation of the image scaling after performing a clean install over an install of the 496.49 and the image is scaling not appearing and this is one of the reasons why i do recommend having a nice ddu doing a base build from scratch does work sometimes when you do their clean install this can happen sometimes but doing their clean install is not that bad it used to be amd that wasn't that good but then amd got pretty decent like i'd like to think that most game developers get that you know they don't want to see people getting pissed on a forum or reaching out to other people to say like what the hell's wrong with this um but i mean hey leave a comment down below if not i've got plenty of videos to show that you can definitely check out in order to help you along your gpu journey as we all journey along this but to return back into a, the situation of scaling as we scale back into the the games that did not launch correctly the geforce gtx 750ti when the nvidia image scaling is enabled Yes, that was an issue. On top of the black screen that had a situation in the optimal notebooks for 1440p with that 165 hertz, that panel, well, it's not so much of a discrete GPU at that point in time, it's loud. Looking on top of the notebook for the EDP panel that cannot be lit when booting to the desktop after switching to the discrete mode. Using the adaptive inside of the portion of the vertical sync, yes, the G sync is enabled and the random workaround on top of that for some times. Now you do have some issues that are still out there for as far as where you can see Horizon Zero Dawn, changing the resolutions, and there are some workarounds for that. You also have some Alliance and Commanders that are going to come down to Deathloop, also is making the list, Sonic, and tons more. It seems like NVIDIA is adding to the list rather than trying to hammer out, but they are juggling some, you know, like a whole bunch of new graphics cards randomly sliding across our table. But let's go ahead and look at some freaking benchmarks. Yes, benchmarks. One of the core things that you can take a look at is the newer driver, which is over here on the right. 
and the older driver that is on the left yes both of those in combination so and on the top we have our hardware accelerator on and off on the bottom so taking a look for as far as where that is you can see that the newer driver definitely does give a straight out the gate 4k performance improvement not by much but when looking at the scoring it definitely is within the 900 level rather than the 800 level of its predecessor so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at our 1080p companion in the DirectX 12 department and see how well it performs up now as we down res into a more optimal performance category of where the pixels aren't going to be as pretty but they are more performance now where does that leave us well it leaves us with our hardware accelerator on with the windows current platform of the os the one we have actually performing well with the hardware accelerator on the advanced scheduling finally works well took them how long but apparently in 4k it doesn't matter because they just make it rain but you know obviously the newer one is going to be hardware accelerator on so far the trend might continue but let's go ahead and take a look at port royale what does it do for ray tracing and this is where you see it just becomes an interesting situation for hardware accelerator off which almost dang near ties but the older driver somehow pulls ahead so if you are looking for more of a ray tracing experience and in direct x12 you're gonna have to make a choice for it to perform well with pixels and lighting yes you will have to go to the older driver give or take with inside of the synthetical test of what's going on right here with 3d mark you can also take a look at the point of if you just want pure performance and you really don't care about a certain glimmer on a pixel then yes installing the new driver and probably having to toggle your hardware accelerator off and on with an any direct x12 platform is going to give you a home run of being able to just get better performance and yes that will require you resetting your computer and rebooting it and you know playing your favorite title if you're cool with that then your game or if you're just an everyday gamer and just want the better experience just install the new driver and leave the hardware accelerator off but let's see what directx 11 says what is fire strike now we're taking a better examine pinning point of what is happening here we can see almost a topsy torments and I mean like a completely like tor performance torments yes we're, we're we're naming that and claiming that literally for this because if you look at the divide right here it literally goes hardware accelerator on old driver good off new driver good on new driver bad not as bad with the older driver but this is 4k and we're looking at a combined score of graphics versus physics versus the combined score which gives us our top score which can have different performance points but when you look at the top and the bottom for the graphics score well there's almost 200 points when you're looking at the newer driver and when looking at the older driver it's just for the graphics points it's not as rocky so i mean but look at the percentage look at the 77 versus the 70 i mean that's that's enough for me to say something because normally the percentage point isn't that big but it is in this with us coming to the very tail end and that's looking more at the 1080p we've gone away from the 4k and seeing what this newer driver has to offer it continues to have the hardware accelerator off seem to be the more favorable portion of the consistent test throughout it so if you look at the old versus new and hardware accelerator off and on there well there is going to be a little bit of a difference and dear golly it seems like with the newer driver with the hardware accelerator on you're probably gonna have to turn it off like this it's 85 across the board and then just 80 on one test duly noted there might be some 1080p problems with this and this is where you just see the newer driver kind of slaughter it it's rather confusing this driver is spread out throughout the places when you're looking at performance for as far as percentage it looks almost identical a little bit but where are you going to find the performance and where are you going to find the areas that are sliding down 
These are the questions that I would look forward to seeing inside of the comments that community members and myself will try to attend to. So leave a comment down below with your experience and what games, what system you have, what graphics card, CPU, all that fun stuff in tandem with the RAM. It seems like a fun fact, or but if you have a pre-build to totally understand, leave a comment down below. I'm sure like someone will try to let you know for as far as what can and cannot be fixed and or is experienced across the community. Because right now at the end of the time, we are here. And we are done. The graphics score up and benchmark extravaganza has now come to an end. And I bid you guys and gals to do. This definitely was fun. For everyone in the holidays, happy holidays. Stay safe out there. Have a very fun time. Good luck to you all. Have a very holly portion. And I wish everyone the best. And I'll see you guys and gals in the near future for more exciting stuff. I got some more uh, patch notes that I need to produce. And well, a few live streams, which would be nice before the holidays are over. So I look forward to seeing everyone there in the near future. And if you're newer to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe. Absolutely free. Helps me out as a creator. And who knows? Maybe Jensen will actually solve the damn waiver problem and make GPUs more affordable. So I did see AMD raise the price on their MSRP, which is funny. I haven't even gotten one. I really do want to email them and just be like, can you please just like give me some like freaking like, like, I don't know, like one or two GPUs we can raffle out to real community members. That'd be kind of cool. But I mean, you know, they only reply to me on patch marks. Yeah. Those, those are the things that they are really expedient with with me. I've still been waiting for them to partner with me. You know, hint, hint, AMD, if you're watching this, this is the end of the video. Select some cool stuff up above, everyone. Yes, for the DDUs so and all the everything that, you know, people are having issues with, it's right up there. Just select it, watch it, it's a fun video. You'll bring your CPU back to life. There's some benchmarks inside of there, sizing up the difference and why you want to do it. But that's the end of this video. Later.